is joining us here on set. She's got a lot of coverage today. The presidential election, of course, here in France. The diminishing appeal of the uh, Republican front you're focusing on, Erin. Yeah, that's right, uh, Stuart. The cover page of Le Monde to say, today says that calls to block Marine Le Pen via the Republican front uh, have grown fragile. Several pieces in today's edition of Le Monde explore different angles and reasons for that. Uh, the first piece quoted voters who supported Macron against Le Pen in 2017 as a part of the Republican front, but this time say that the government's response to the Yellow Vest movement changed their mind. They say that it showed a neoliberal majority uh, with its violence, that it, that it bl blinded and mutilated protesters, a reference, of course, uh, to the repression that saw many people lose their eyes, even their hands, uh, from police uh, grenades. Uh, there was also, um, on, uh, on the next page, uh, Stuart, a piece on the overseas territories of Martinique and Guadeloupe. Uh, in the first round, mostly supported uh, Mélenchon, and are now a growing number of them are planning on supporting, supporting Marine Le Pen. Uh, it says that one major reason for that is uh, that the vaccine requirement on the island sparked major uh, protests and even strikes. Uh, and finally, Stuart, there's a piece on business leaders. It suggests that they are hesitant as well to say openly who they're voting for, for a couple of different reasons. Some support Marine Le Pen's ideas, including reindustrialization of France, uh, while others are worried that if they voice support for Emmanuel Macron, it might turn Mélenchon voters away, especially because Macron is always largely seen as, already largely seen as the um, as the president of the rich. And in fact, Jean-Luc Mélenchon's party, they had uh, an internal vote, didn't they, on who to uh, support. Bad news for Emmanuel Macron. Yeah, that's right. Le Parisien says that the results of that internal show survey show that nearly 38 percent of the 215,000 participants plan to submit a blank ballot. Uh, 29 percent won't vote at all. And just 33.4 percent that they say that they will vote for Macron. So nearly 60 percent either not going to vote or will submit a blank ballot. Now, one major criticism of the poll, though, Stuart, is that the option to vote vote for Marine Le Pen wasn't an option on that internal survey, so the percentage of Mélenchon voters who will actually vote instead for Marine Le Pen remains a mystery. Erin mentioned Marine Le Pen, and Liberation details her political agenda in uh, today's edition, doesn't it? Yeah, Stuart, the editorial starts by asking readers to close their eyes and just imagine it. Marine Le Pen announced president of the republic. Over in the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin, who's destroyed a significant part of Ukraine, uh, cracks open a bottle of Russian champagne to celebrate what he's always wanted, the implosion of Europe via one of its most powerful countries, France, also because Marine Le Pen's party still owes a Russian bank a lot of money, uh, and because Marine Le Pen has just said that she wants NATO to become an ally to, to Russia in the future. Uh, Donald Trump, meanwhile, will celebrate with bottles of Diet Coke because it'll help him legit legitimize his, his possible re-election campaign in 2024. And over in Syria, the butcher of Damascus, Bashar al-Assad, says the piece is also rejoicing because Le Pen has been wanting France to establish diplomatic relations with Syria. Now, this is all meant to paint a picture of the national rallies, uh, foreign affairs uh, policy. The rest of the piece in Liberation on the next page, focusing on what it describes as her reactionary conception of international relations. It would put France on the side of illiberal dictatorships uh, all over the world. Uh, and they also say that the links between Le Pen and Putin, as as, as suggested in that photo, uh, are, are deep and go far uh, beyond these past elections. They say that it started under perestroika with her uh, father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, traveling to Russia. Uh, Russia, for these parties, these far-right parties, represents a masculine, conservative, white, and Christian Europe, an alternative to the more open-minded, uh, liberal uh, Western model under American imperialism. And, of course, uh, despite this uh, image of uh, Russia in Europe, Vladimir Putin is appealing in many parts of uh, Africa as well. Yeah, Stuart, The Guardian did a really interesting piece on Facebook struggling to control deliberate disinformation campaigns composed of pro-Russia, anti-Western uh, posts, which investigators say are contributing to, to, dis to instability in West Africa. Now, a report by one research group showed that pro-Russian Facebook pages in Mali coordinated support for anti-democracy protests there and for the Russian paramilitary group uh, the, the Wagner Group. Uh, now, the five pages that the researchers investigated just on Mali published nearly 24,000 posts and are followed by some 140,000 accounts. Uh, they've been promoting Wagner as an alternative to French forces. Uh, they helped spur pro-Russian and anti-French protests in Burkina Faso. Uh, now, Facebook declined to take down these pages when alerted Stuart, and that's because they say even though they're clearly a part of a coordinated effort, uh, they don't appear to be a front for fake users. And that's meaning that they're not inauthentic 
authentic. This is what the company is struggling to manage, the boundary between what's considered authentic, what's considered inauthentic, uh, and determining when this behavior becomes harmful, obviously subjective. It depends on the specific context, on people's individual views, uh, and also because these aren't bots anymore. These are increasingly individuals who are being paid uh, to, to, to make posts or who are increasingly holding the ideas that they're promoting. Where to draw the line? Difficult to know, isn't it? Now, finally, yesterday was Easter. Did you know that? I'm sure you did. Uh, you found a piece on why Easter egg chocolate tastes better than normal chocolate. Yeah, this piece from the British outlet Metro says it doesn't make sense why these eggs are so much better, but it's undeniable. Why? Are we gaslighting ourselves? Okay. Is it because of the nice spring weather coming out? Well, there's a scientific reason, Stuart, according mm. to this piece, and that's because of their round shape. Mm. A 2013 study found that the shape of chocolate can indeed influence the perception of its flavor. Okay. Uh, the round shape one apparently is said to deliver the most in terms of melting and smoothness. I will say that that's a Nestle study, so it'll be we can take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> right, okay. One more study, Stuart, says, yeah. by the British Food Journal, says that consumers do find rounder-shaped chocolate to be creamier than square-shaped, and that's because the shape has a large surface area and because you get a more rapid release of molecules, according to a molecular uh, gastronomy expert quoted in that piece. So who knew? Any chocolate is good for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind whether it's chunk 